It's Chris Van Vliet at ICW in Miami alongside Adam Rose. You finished? Oh, no, you're just... I finished. Oh, oh man. People don't realize that most of the time it's actually just a stick. <laughs> <laughs> that also most of the time I've eaten it before I've gone out, so it's horrible. That saves you money, though, right? No, I have bags and bags full of them. But I actually, surprisingly enough, I never buy them. I'm always giving them, so it's all right. Really? Yeah, How does that work? Fans bins, the last two bags were given to me, so they're not laced with LSD, I'm doing well. <laughs> but, and you don't know. You're just you trusting never know. the fans. I just trust them. And if they are laced with LSD, well... That makes for a really interesting match. <laughs> yes, exactly. what, what, is there a certain flavor, a go-to flavor? I actually just like, uh, it's the strawberry with the bubblegum in the middle. I don't like Tootsie Pop, the, the, the toffee deal. I hate the toffee deal. I remember how many times in a row they would give me the toffee deal, and then as I was about to go out and notice it was toffee deal, and have a like a tantrum in Gorilla before we know <laughs> It's toffee! I can't do anything with toffee! All right, it's gets stuck in your teeth, and the whole match, you get this piece of toffee just stuck in it. It's horrible. What was this music you came out to tonight? It sounded similar to yeah. the music we heard in WWE. That's above envy. It's the original song, actually. That was the song that played once on NXT, and then they changed it because obviously WWE likes to control all their things. And they, sure. at that point, there was something going on where they needed to have all ownership of all music, and then they changed it to try and make it sound like, but not quite. But this was actually the original soundtrack. That's actually the song I wanted the entire time. I like that song. Much better, huh? Oh, yeah. Way better. No oh. offense. WWE did a great job. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah great Thumbs job. up. <laughs> This was your uh, character that you came up with. Yes. Basically, I mean, we all saw the E60 thing, which I think was fascinating. Thank you. How much attention did you get after E60? Um, a lot, but the funny thing is it was a dissected audience, and this was something that was told to me when I got up there. It's two different audiences that watch it, watched E60 and that watched Raw. The people that watched E60 were mainstream audience people. They weren't yeah. necessarily wrestling fans. They were people just in general, yeah. sports fans just in general. And then we had our wrestling audience. And um, so it was a dissected audience. It didn't necessarily impact the wrestling audience the way people thought it would have. Because at one point there was a big, there was meeting after meeting after meeting. Do we change his character? Do we make him this? And then what are we going to make him a family man? It was like, what do we do with him? And eventually they were like, well, just ignore it. Let's move on. So this, it was one of those things. Same with the bunny. We don't know what to do, so let's just ignore it and move on. Okay. Yeah, and it just kind of disappeared. Yeah, the gimmick. Same thing. It was like there was. I think it was Road Dog. They were in a meeting for two hours before we were saying who is going to be the bunny, and they couldn't decide. So I wanted Gabriel to do it because he was my friend from when I was fifteen, and he was sixteen. His dad trained me, and we've known each other our whole lives. So like, let him do it. They were like, well, no one really knows him anymore, and they don't really get to get the reaction they want. And then there was a suggestion that Vince McMahon do it, and I was like, what's the payoff? <laughs> I don't get it. And they're like, well, we don't know where to go, so why not have a crazy billionaire just do it? Well, it could and be then, like yeah. the higher power. Exactly. And then it was Hornswoggle. Remember that? Anyway, so <laughs> it's like, I mean, they just didn't really know where to go because he, it's, at one point, the bunny had a huge amount of momentum. Of course. And then they went to, see, everything's like a curve. You've got to catch it on the apex of the curve when it starts to drift. So when I finally did attack bunny, they cheered me for it and it ruined everything. So <laughs> I don't know what to do with it from there. Yeah, that was it. What I mean, it was going to be a really dark gimmick at yes. one point, right? Like That's a Donnie Darko doing. type thing? That's what I was pushing. I was always pushing to go, because I am a huge Marilyn Manson fan, so I was actually pushing to go that route with my character with Marilyn Manson and make the bunny this real dark, sinister character. I wanted him to be six foot five, 350 pounds with the thing on, we just ignore everything else he did, you know, <laughs> put the bunny head on, and it just never materialized, because by that point, they'd already decided where momentum was going. So if you wanted Justin Gabriel to be the bunny, he actually was the bunny several times. He did it the majority of the time, especially in-ring action. I can mention all the people that did it, but I'm not going to. But well, can um, you tell me how many different people did wear the costume? Oh, well, live events. I mean, there's always someone doing it. So sure. I mean, that, that's what just normally. If there was in-ring activity and actual contact, that was when we actually picked somebody to do it, so we could trust them with it. Justin was the guy who did it mainly, and that was the guy I was pushing to do it, but they didn't feel we could get the momentum we needed on it. I feel if we had run a couple of vignettes explaining the back history, explaining everything else, we could have done something with it. I also pitched to have someone from the 80s do it that was necessarily out of work and yeah. needed the job, and, and then I could like, you know, beat on him and humiliate him and make him my slave and that type of thing, and then he'd piece <laughs> the crap out of me at pay with you. So it's like, it, there were so many different things we could do with it, but we just didn't know how to pay with it. I love how many people that are now in WWE or NXT that were Rosebuds for yes. you. Who are people most surprised to find out? Well, I think uh, Braun's probably the guy who can't live it now. And, and the funny thing about this is that Braun's the nicest person in the world. People don't know that, but he's actually probably one of the nicest people. And a country, he's country voice. He's, he can sing country music. People don't know this. Braun's Braun's know if he sings country music, you'll fall in love with him. You will. He could sing a country song like no other. Anyway, so he's got an amazing voice for it, and he was also, at one point, my Rosebud General, because he used to control all the others, and I still remember we were at a roll the one day, and Braun was like, Everyone, listen up! 
this is about Mr. Rose, it's not about you. And I was like, Braun, calm down, there's no need to be that about the whole thing. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Braun was actually, I think that's the one people, and they'll never let him live it down. <laughs> never. I still remember being in Gorilla and Vince McMahon seeing him in his rosebud outfit and looking at Hunter like, what are you doing to us? <laughs> I noticed you didn't do the trust fall here tonight. Do you not no. trust th no. these rosebuds? I don't trust these rosebuds. I love them, but I don't trust them. In fact, I don't trust many people to do the trust fall with anymore. That was the bane of my life. People what? don't realize that the trust fall was the bane of my life. We were supposed to do it once off on a debut and done. The next thing I know, for a year, I had to rehearse trust falls with extras that I didn't know. I had to come in before rehearsal started, gather all the extras, rehearse my trust fall, and then they could all go be extras amongst themselves. But it was a miserable time for me because I had to always put that together. Every time I get to War Smackdown, I had to go find all the extras and put them together and go to trust fall. It's a terrible pain in my butt. So, it, I mean, it truly was a trust fall. It was. And it's luckily, can I, say this? can I say it? Never dropped me once. Yeah. Not once was I dropped. Unless we meant it, but not once was I dropped. So you're standing. Even up when they dropped me, when I meant it, they made it look like they meant it, so it didn't look right. But the point is, they could not drop me. There's always someone willing to catch me. You you announced that this year is going to be your final year yes. of wrestling. Uh, was that yeah. always the plan? Uh, it wasn't, but I feel like it's time to move on to other things. I just I don't want to be one of those guys that's hanging on and hanging on and hanging on and hanging on. It's done. It's had its life, it's over with, and it was fun while well, it lasted, and it's now time to move on to other things. You know, I've got a wife, and I've got two kids, and I, I've got other business interests, and I just feel like I can't be, like, I can't justify being here if I'm half foot in, half foot out. Sure. So, I mean, do you have a, a final match plan? Do you have anything Not like yet. I would love to say my final match will be at SummerSlam in front of so many thousands of people, and everyone will care, but it's not going to happen. My final match will probably happen somewhere, no one will hear about it. It's like, I'll tell you, if a tree falls and no one sees it fall, does it actually fall? Does it make a sound? Make a sound. sound? I don't That's know. Like, yeah. Is it a sound or a viewing thing? I can't tell. But anyway, the fact of the matter is, it'll happen somewhere along the line. It might just have happened. Do that you... could have been it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Do you know? That's why you'll see at the end. I always wave goodbye. I always say goodbye because I'm not sure if that's it. Do you yeah. know who you want to work with? Um, there's a couple of guys that are just friends of mine that I'd like to probably do the last thing. Bull Dempsey is one of them. He was a good friend of mine for a long time. And uh, Justin, obviously, is a good friend of mine since I was 15. So and we've traveled this journey together. So uh, probably him or Bull. So, you know, we always hear stories about wrestlers going on to other jobs. Uh, where, where are we going to see you in a couple of years, if you have these other interests? I have, um, surprisingly enough, in Tampa, I have Exotic Express Limousine Services, which actually does operate. And then I also have a wow. tattoo parlor, which is currently in the process of opening. So those in are the Tampa two. As well? In Tampa as well? In Tampa. I ah. love Tampa. I'll stay in Tampa. Cops don't like me there, but I'll stay there. Bye. Men, like, Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? That's it. Oh. <laughs>